Stability AI just came out with Stable Fast 3D that lets you take these 2D images and transform it to 3D. In this video, I will talk about what is SF3D, why I use it, how does it work, and go through a code demo. By the end of this video, we will see how we could transform this otter here with a sword to a 3D model, as you can see on the right. All of my code and doc will be on my website, kevinwoodrobotics.com. So what is SF3D? So SF3D, the SF here stands for Stable Fast, and 3D is just for the 3D model. And it's an AI model that is used to convert 2D images to 3D model. So 3D model, you can also think of it as meshes, which is described by a bunch of triangles. So why use SF3D? So in general, there are many applications for generating meshes. So you could do it for movies, gaming, e-commerce or AR and VR. These are just some applications. But here you can look at some of the performance specifically for SF3D. So you could take a look here. We have different models that we're looking at. We have SF3D, CRM, Tripo SR, Instant Mesh, Open LRM, Zero Shape, and LGM. And here on the bottom is the inference time or image per second. And on the y-axis is the f-score. And you can see that if we're looking at SF3D, which is the green triangle up here, it's pretty high up at about 0.7, and the time is also very fast. But you can see the rest here is much slower, so you can see that it's tapering down here, and the F score is like decreasing, so the general trend is going down. You can see Instant Mesh is a pretty good competitor. Um, even though it takes longer, the performance, the F score is pretty high. So there's a couple of features that make the SF3D stand out. So one of the things that they talk about in the paper is called light bake in. So the problem that we're dealing with is that the input image typically has shadows or illuminations, and it gets what's called baked in with the texture. So it makes the 3D model less usable, especially if you want to change the lighting or uh, modify some of that in another type of rendering. So you can see here on the far left, GT is the ground truth. The middle is the Tripo SR. This is one of the models that they try to improve upon. So a lot of it is going to be built off of on top of that. And then on the far right is the SF3D. So if you notice here on the middle, the middle one, you can see it's very dark. So that's what they call the shadows being baked in. And on the right, you can see that the illumination is much clearer. So um, as I said before, it helps with some of the lighting, if you could change the lighting in different situations based on how you want to render it. So the solution that SF3D came up with is a spherical Gaussian, which is a method that they use to help with some of this um, light bake-in problem. So another thing is the vertex colors. So the problem that they saw is that meshes have high vertex count, and typically with high vertex count, the rendering is going to be more inefficient because of how many points they're trying to render. So one of the solutions that SF3D came up with is a parallel computed UV unwrapping technique to render much faster. And one thing to note is that the Tripo SR has 10 times more polygon count but less detail. So Notice if you look at the zoomed in area at the circle, and if you compare it with this zoomed in area for SF3D, the SF3D zoomed in area has much more detail. But of course, if you compare it with the ground truth, the ground truth is definitely much better. But relative between these two AI models, you could see that SF3D is doing much better, especially compared with is using a tenth of the number of vertices. So another problem that we deal with is the marching cubes artifacts. So the problem is that marching cube can cause stair staircase artifacts, which can be improved with more resolution. But of course, if you increase the resolution by having adding more volume or more points, you end up having a more expensive computation. So the solution that SF3D came up with is they have this model called DMTET. And what it does is it can be used to smooth out the mesh surfaces. So if you notice that here, the Tripo SR, you can see that there's some bumps here going on. So these are the artifacts that we see from marching cubes. But if you notice here on the right with SF3D, we don't see any of those bumps and the surface is very smooth. So 
in terms of the surface performance is much better. Another thing is that there's a lack of property material. So if you look up on the top row, it's the Tripo SR. The bottom is the SF3D. Notice that most methods, they're actually missing material properties. So here they actually, they're able to capture some of that. And if you notice that if you try to compare between these images, typically the top row looks a little bit duller, whereas the bottom, as you can see, this one has a nice reflective property. Same with this um, red thing here, this container or bowl with holes in it, you can see that at the bottom, the illumination looks much better. And same with here, you can see the shadows and the bottom is much brighter and vivid. So here are more examples of comparing all of the methods that are pretty popular nowadays. So you have the CRM, Instant Mesh, SF3D, LGM, and the Tripo SR. But if you look at here, you can see that with the CRM, you can see all these weird artifacts that show up, which are pretty unwanted. The Instant Mesh, as you can see, is doing pretty well. Um, if you compare it with the SF3D, I would say these two are actually pretty comparable, but as we saw earlier, it was some of the main speed performance that we saw a difference with. And you can see here with LGM, it's pretty bad. So you can see that um, the top contenders are definitely these two, but notice that the Tripo SR is, uh, is, tends to be a lot darker, as you can see here. And here's another example. If you take a look here um, with CRM, you can see that uh, the face here of the cow seems to be distorted, especially when you compare with the ground truth. You get a better look at the face features of the eyes. The LGM just looks like a complete blob for this view, so I don't even know what that is. Instant Mesh looks okay here. You can see the front view of the face it didn't do as well. Uh, Tripo SR, you can see that the front of the face, you can start to see some features, but <laughs> it seems to be a little bit distorted. The left view too, you can see that it's kind of distorted as well for the Tripo SR. But here for the SF3D, you can see that uh, the face here at least has a little bit more structure and it's better. Um, the left here also seems to be a little bit more recognizable. So you can see some subtle differences. Of course, it's still nowhere near the ground truth in terms of, um, you, you, you can still tell there's a difference between the ground truth, right? But in terms of how far it has gone in the development, you can see that it's done a lot better. And if you take a look here, this is the overall performance of the different models that we're comparing with. So you can see that SF3D, you see we're hitting uh, numbers of like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9s. And these are the different methods that we were comparing, which we just talked about. So overall, you can see that the numbers pretty much stand out among the rest. So how does SF3D work? So if you take a look here, um, there's different components to it, some of which we've talked about earlier. But again, you have your input image, which is 2D. And first off, if you look at the top, this part is the enhanced transformer. So what it does is it passes into the Dyno V2, and it gets the image tokens. It's going to go into the transformer, and the output is going to be what's called a triplane. So the triplane, they have it up to... Uh, 384 by 384, which is an improvement in the previous one, which was like 90 something by 90 something. And you can see here on the bottom, they have a material estimation part. So that's how they handle some of the material properties aspect of the model. And they have this what's called a material net, which outputs the metallic and roughness features. And then from there, you can see on the top, they do some mesh extraction and refinement. So things like the density offsets and the normals. They talked about the DMTT model, which they use <laughs> for some of the bacon problems. So you can see here that um, here, or actually some of the mesh, the mesh problems that we were talking about. So you can see here that um, after that, the bottom you can see is the illumination model. So here it passes through a light net, does some SG illumination, and then some differentiable rendering here. And then finally, that takes the two outputs from the top and bottom and then passes it into the fast UV unwrapping and export, which will finally give some of the final texture of the model. So this is the overall architecture of the SF3D. And now let's go ahead and take a look at the code. So as you can see here, this is our input image of the otter, which is a 2D image. 
And when we run the script, what we're going to do is we're going to output in this folder, and then you're going to have an input image, a mesh.glb. And then what we're going to do from there is we're going to view the model. So if I run my view model, you can see that this is my 3D rendering of my otter here. So you can see that overall it does a pretty good job. Um, the back is very amazing how it could predict what the back looks like from only the front view. So that's very impressive. And if you look at the top down view, you can see that overall the um, width the depth of the image is actually pretty accurately predicted. But of course, you could look, if you look closely at the sword, um, there's definitely some deformation going on here, right? But I would say overall, it's still very good for uh, like just purely one image, one view with AI. So it's very impressive. Um, you look at the feet here in detail too. So um, you can see that overall, it's very amazing, I would say. And you could play around with different models, but of course, all of the performance that you see here is going to be based off of your training methods. So um, if you want to work for a specific application, then you may want to train it with that data that you're working with. So all my code and doc is on my website at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.